Hello, so today we will be discussing about the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid. Uh, in the previous classes, we have seen uh, how we can resolve accelerations, okay, particularly how do we use radial acceleration, uh, transverse acceleration, or tangential acceleration and normal acceleration. We have learned how to calculate uh, problems involving those. Uh, over here, what we will be doing over here, we will be studying the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid by using those accelerations that we uh, had seen. Because if you remember motion, it is all about acceleration and velocities, distance and time. So we are going to use those directions that we had learned. We will apply them over here. Uh, but first things first, what is a cycloid? Uh, just think of it uh, in this way. You are having a ground, you are having a circle. The radius of the circle, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter that the radius be anything, okay? But for our convenience, for our convenience, uh, let us choose the radius to be A. What is a cycloid? A cycloid, it is the part generated by this, uh, by the, by a point on the circumference of a circle. What that is saying is, you take any point, you roll the circle. If you roll the circle to this side, this point, it will travel, it will take this part. And if you roll it uh, further, okay, you will get another part like this. If you roll it to this side, this point will be like this. So this part that this point is tracing, only this one, it is called as a cycloid. It is called as a cycloid. Over here the base, the base is this ground that we are talking about, where you are rolling the circle. This point over here, it is called the vertex. These two extreme points, they are called as the cusp. CUSP. Okay, so A, A dash are the called cusp. O is the vertex. And this circle, it is called as the generating circle. Uh, so this is a cycloid. Again, I repeat, the cycloid, it is not this whole thing. It is just this part, this outer part. Okay, and there is an imaginary line that we are thinking. This one, it is called as the axis. Okay, so actually you can rotate this uh, one anywhere. But over here, what are we interested in? We are interested in the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid. So naturally, this, this surface over here, this is the inside surface. This one, it is the outside surface. So if it is turning in this way, it is very hard for motion. If the cycloid is in this way, then the motion will be on the outside of the cycloid. So what will we do? Over here, it will be the same figure only, but we will just uh, flip uh, it. Uh, okay, we will rotate uh, the image. Okay, we will flip it upside down. So what we will do? You can just imagine the ground is upwards, which is the base, the base is upwards, the cycloid this something like this, the generating circle of radius A, it is something like this, the cups A and A dash, the vertex is O, the axis is vertical. Okay, so this is all, and the radius is A. Okay, so this is the cycloid that we will be interested in when we are studying motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid. Uh, you can just imagine placing a marble over here. Okay, it will continue to roll. Okay, so we are interested in the motion of that marble that we are placing on this cycloid. Okay, so now that we have seen what a cycloid is, up there, okay, there are some very important relations. Remember that over here, we are not using any coordinates, anything, but we are using intrinsic coordinates. So sorry, we are not using Cartesian coordinates, 
but we are using intrinsic coordinates. Of course, we can do it with Cartesian coordinates, there's no problem, but uh, the problem becomes simplified if we use intrinsic coordinates. So if we are using intrinsic coordinates, we will be using S and we will be using Psi. Up there, you can see it is, it is the relation one, it is a relation between S and Psi. S equal 4A sine Psi, where A is the radius of the circle. S as it is this arc length okay from any point o to point p psi it is the angle the tangential angle okay you can just imagine another line here it is this tangential angle okay as it is the arc length from o to p okay the length of this curve and psi it is the angle of the tangent at B. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now, what what will we do? Uh, the above four equations, uh, relations, you will have to remember them. How exactly do we derive those relations? Okay, uh, the first one, okay, you can just check the link in the description. It's not so important how to derive that relation, but just in case if you are interested, you can check the link in the description below. Uh, the second relation, uh, again, okay, we can easily derive it. Again, check the description below if you want to see how do we derive that. Uh, the third one, I can e easily show it. Okay, and over here there in relation 2, you are not saying y. What is y? Y, it is the height of this point P. Okay, why it is the height of this point P. Okay, sometimes if the point is over here, so y will also change. Uh, okay, so I hope that is clear. Uh, the third relation you can easily see, okay, at the point O. At the point O, S is zero because you are measuring everything from the vertex. So that is why uh, there is there is no arc length uh, at O. So that is why S is zero. The angle psi, okay, at O, the tangent, the tangent, it will be horizontal only. So that is why psi will be zero. And the height, the height of this point, it is zero, so y will be zero. At the cups, a, okay, let, let us put a, a, a dash over here and a over here. At the cups, s is equal to 4a. How do we get that? Actually, because over here, okay, if you draw it properly, you will see that psi, it will be 90 degree. Okay, so you can see the second rule, uh, uh, relation number 4, psi is equal to pi by 2. S is equal to 4a because s equal 4a sine psi. So at a, psi is equal to pi by 2 sine pi by 2. So 4a sine pi by 2 it will be 4a. And y, the height, it is 2a because the radius is a. So this height, it will be 2a. So I hope that is clear. Okay, so that is exactly how we get those relations, 3 and 4 in particular. 1 and 2, you can check the link in the description. Uh, so now with that being said, we can now derive the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid. Uh, so if you have to frame a question, you can frame it like this. Investigate the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid. Uh, before, uh, before I show you what it is, just imagine again a cycloid. Okay, just imagine a cycloid like that. If you roll a marble from this point, it, it will roll down, but it will not stop at this point. It will again go up. Okay, it will oscillate. It will oscillate, so that is why we can expect uh, e eventually that the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid, it will be an oscillatory motion. Or uh, and as you will see, it will turn out to be a simple harmonic motion. Keep that in mind. Okay, that is exactly what we want to show. Ultimately, that the motion will be simple harmonic. So again, let us draw that figure. Since since we are using intrinsic coordinates, so now we will be focusing on two directions. That is the tangential direction and the normal direction. Okay, so let the particle start from the 
uh, okay let it start from anywhere it doesn't really matter it can start from here it can start anywhere okay for for our sake uh, for, of the derivation let us imagine that this roll ring down okay uh, at some point of time maybe it is at this point p okay this is the tangent this is the tangential angle shaft this is the point p that a particle is at okay so now since we are going to use normal directions and uh, tangential directions so what do we do this one we will call it as the positive tangential direction okay we will call it as the positive tangential direction and this one we will call it as the positive normal direction uh, this over here will be the negative normal di uh, negative tangential direction and this one will be the negative normal direction okay but we don't need those we only need uh, the the positive the positive uh, tangential direction and the positive normal direction positive tangential direction and this here is a positive normal direction again i repeat we are using these two directions since we are will be using the uh, intrinsic coordinates uh, if you want to study the motion you will first have to understand what are the forces that uh, that this particle that is rolling will experience uh, so because it is a smooth cycloid uh, friction will not be involved okay so friction will not be involved but the particle will have some weight the weight at the point will always act downwards so let it be mg the particle of mass m the weight is mg and this one will be the normal reaction r Okay, so these are the two forces that the particle will always uh, experience. Uh, what exactly is the normal reaction? You can think of it in this way. Uh, if I keep it, uh, if I keep this uh, marker over here, it will not fall down because of the force uh, that this duster is applying to this uh, marker. Okay, so that is the normal uh, reaction. Okay. So I hope that is clear, whereas if I put it in air, okay, the normal reaction, of course, it is there, maybe some air resistance, but it is not that huge. Okay, so normal reaction, it can be offered by any surface uh, or any medium, in, in fact. Okay, so now that we have seen that these are the two, that these are the two uh, forces that are acting on this particle, we will again have to resolve everything into the positive tangential direction and everything into the positive normal direction. So this angle is shy. Okay, uh, just, just take a look at this. So you are having something like this. This is mg. This angle is shy. So this angle, it will be 90 minus shy. 90 minus shy. So, because weight it is a vector, you can resolve it in any direction. You can resolve it over here. The, the resolution over here of this uh, vector mg, which is the weight, it will be mg sine shy. Okay, just take a look. The angle it is 90 minus shy. So, over here will be mg sine shy. Similarly, over here, if you resolve it, this direction will be mg cos shy. Okay, so that is what I will fill here. This one is mg cos shy. And to this direction, it will be mg sin shy. Okay, so how do we start this? Okay, uh, let a be the radius of the generating circle the generating circle of the cyclone with okay the vertex is downwards 
vertex downwards and the axis the axis it is vertical and vertical axis okay let uh, and then you can fill it up uh, let the particle of mass m roll on the inside of the smooth cycloid okay let a uh, particle of mass m a roll on the inside inside of the smooth cyclone okay so the intrinsic equation you can uh, immediately write it down the intrinsic equation of the cycloid is the intrinsic equation of the cycloid is s equal 4a sin star again we don't need to derive this okay uh, so after uh, at any point p at any point p at any point p uh, the forces that the particle is experiencing is the weight and the normal reaction okay so resolving resolving uh, all the forces resolving all the forces along the positive normal direction and resolving all the forces along the positive tangential direction and positive normal direction we get okay what exactly do we get okay after resolving uh, the forces this is what we get we will get okay so if you remember force is equal to mass into acceleration right so mass times the acceleration the acceleration we will use the tangential acceleration d to s d to dt square how much will you get this one this one you will get as minus mg sine psi how exactly did i get this one because if you remember the cycloid was in this way the particle was rolling uh, in this side so this one is was mg sin star but but we want the forces in that direction so that is why it will be minus mg sin star this is the force this is the force in the tangential direction okay force in the tangential direction it will be minus mg sin star and also the force in the normal direction how much will we get m v square by rho how did i get v square by rho because if you remember the normal acceleration it is v square by rho it will be over here will be r minus remember that mg cos psi was over here so it will be r minus mg cos psi so this one just name it equation one this one equation two and this one equation three uh, so what can we exactly say equation two and equation three both of them represents the equations of motion on the inside of the smooth cycloid again i repeat equation two and three represents represents the equations of motion on the smooth cycloid which are the equations of motion equations of motion okay both of them they represent they represent the equation of motion but if you remember we want to show that it is simple harmonic because that is what we expect that is what we expect so what will we do okay using equation one and equation two how much will we get 
m and m will get cancelled so we will get d2s dt squared equal minus if you remember s equal 4a sine psi s equal 4a sine psi so sine psi sine psi it will be equal to s by 4a so you will get minus g by 4a uh, s okay so substitute this one over here you will get d 2 s dt squared equal minus g by 4a s uh, this tells you that the acceleration it is negative right it is negative so it means that it is directed towards the uh, origin or the vertex so because the acceleration acceleration is directed towards the vertex that means that the uh, motion is simple harmonic okay which is similar to d2s dt square equal minus mu s okay whenever you see an equation that looks like this just know that the equation uh, is simple harmonic that the motion is simple harmonic therefore the motion is simple harmonic is simple harmonic motion simple harmonic motion okay and the time period with time period time period t time period t is equal to 2 pi by root mu okay t is equal to 2 pi by root mu so it will be 2 pi mu it is g by 4a g by 4a so you will get it to be equal to uh, 4 pi root a by g if you simplify you will have something that looks like this this is the time period what exactly do we mean by the time period in case you have forgotten uh, you roll down the particle from here so the time taken from the particle to travel from here to this point and then back again it is 4 pi root a by g so the time for one complete oscillation it is 4 pi root a by g okay so this is all okay for the equation of motion uh, now what we will do okay based on the things that we have learned let us try to solve some exercises i think it is best if i solve these exercises in the next video for now just remember that the equation uh, that the motion on the inside of a smooth cycloid is simple harmonic